Hi, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import data into Smart PLS and then do basic modeling in the diagram and, and then in the coming videos you will learn how to make complicated models. So in this video, we, we make sure that by the end you will be able to learn how to make a same model and then estimate. So first of all, we will look at the data file. So I have this data file filled using questionnaires. So this is the serial number of questionnaire and this is the number of questions. Make sure for your ease, try to make serial numbers of questions in a way that if it is a questionnaire and it is representing some latent variable, then your names represent that they are from one group so that when they are being estimated, their names will form a pattern and then it will be very easy for you to identify if the patterns are correct or not. So there are about uh, there are 355 and 354 observations excluding the title. Uh, so these are variables and I have saved into CSV format. So you, it requires data to be in CSV format. Now we'll go back to SPSS. So before you start you have to create a new project. You have to name it uh, learning smart PLS. Okay, so you create. So once you create the new project, it will ask you to do two two things: to so import data file, and you select the data file in CSV format. Double click it; it will read the file. If there is there are any issues in the file, it will notify it here. If it is not able to read the file, it will mark that, and it will also mark variable which has repeated names so I'm correcting them so while you are renaming, renaming them there might be a typo error so it will pick it up that two variables have same names so there are other issues like if the data is not numeric it will also mark it here that it is not metric rather than it is a either the ordinal or a categorical variable so you have to like this is binary variable so it will identify and, and, and it, the data has problem and if there are missing values, it will also identify uh, somewhere along the line that it has missing values. So you have to drop those rows where there are missing values or drop that variable only which you might not want to use it and because of that you have to drop the variables. So you can name the file as new data so that you can identify uh, new data CSV, any name you want to use and then you do press import. So this way data is imported and it will be loaded when the data is imported. Then it will show you the descriptive stats or basics uh, of the variables of all the items. Okay, so it, it has normality test and it has simple mean and standard deviation. Okay, and this is data. So you can also look at its correlations using this and then you can export that into Excel file and you can also look at the raw data if you want to. So this way you, then you can go in setup and setup is the same thing that where we imported it and, and then you go back. You can also create groups like if, if you have two different source and you want to compare them together so you can add a group here but for that you need to add a variable that is identifying the group. So this way data is added. So now we will go towards uh, learning how to make a simple model. So now create a model. So choose type, I will go with PLSM, okay, so model name, also SEM Learning M Smart PLS. So I have named it, so it will open a canvas. Now I will show you in this video that how to uh, make a simple model, okay. And so for that, the fastest way is I have named them together for those variables which are in the same group. So I will just highlight them and then move them here and I will name it so this is so it will become a variable okay so a latent variable and all its uh, items that are shown here so it is showing me that the variable is not connected to another so without its connection you cannot measure it so now I will add one more so that we can we can make complete model so I will pick this one another big one so I will move them here 
and I will name it this. So these are two variables. I can zoom it out so that you can have a look. So uh, zoom out. So the diagrams can be seen. Zoom out. It's too much. Now it's viewable. You can click it here and move it down a little. Now there are two two latent variables. Now you can have a connect from this to this, and this has become the first model. So these are uh, level one variables. This is level two, level two, and they are latent variables. So now you can do a simple regression. In this video, we'll learn how to do this. So connect simple regression algorithm, and when we start doing calculation. It will take some time and then give you the results. So in this results, what what you want to see first that this is the effect from this latent to this latent. Okay, I will let me zoom it a little. And these are the loadings of uh, these items for this index. So it is also showing outer model, its loadings, constructs, its R square, and an inner path, uh, inner model path coefficients. Okay. So in the construct it's saying R square here. So my model is it has an R square of 0.34. So the JB, JP variable is explaining uh, JC by 34%. And this is the model. So now we go in detail. So these are path coefficients. So this is the effect of uh, JC, uh, JP on JC. Okay. Uh, JP on JC. So one unit increase in JP is increasing JC by 0.58. You can also make a bar chart if there are more than one effects, and you can customize the chart by changing the the X and Y axis names if you want. Then there are no indirect effects because I have not added any moderator. Total effects will be same as the path because there is no indirect effect. Now go towards outer loadings. Uh, theoretically, uh, the loadings should be more than 0.7. So all which are below 0.7 are in red. Uh, the solution to this is that you go back to the model and drop the lowest ones first and see how they improve. So one by one, so because every one you remove, others grow bigger. So try to remove one at a time and do one again and again. So what is the implication if they are not loading? Uh, the loading are low. I will show you in next test. So outer weightings. These are the effects. Now latent variables. This is the new data that has been created. Latent variable. You can move it into some other software and make scatter plots. Or, or most of the things are already here. Like it can show you its correlation. It can show you its covariations. It can show you its descriptives. And uh, beyond it, if you export this data, you can do the the scatter plots or any other uh, graphical evaluation that you want to do. So this is your actual data. Uh, outer model scores. Okay, uh, then you go towards R square. This is R square point uh, point three four and adjusted R is point three three. Then you go to F square. Since F square is actually uh, variable wise R square, so since there is only one variable, so there is only one F square. It should be higher too, so it is high enough zero point five one seven. If it is low, it will be in red, and and it will if it is lower. If this is low, then it will be increased. If you uh, remove the items in the first step that I showed you earlier, then there is a construct liability. This is a test that uh, is very important. First is Cronbach Alpha. It looks for variability in the data, then composite liability, and then AVE. Uh, this uh, test checks for that the items that you do you provided should be loaded into the relevant indices that you made. So it is actually talking about the CFA. Uh, uh, so, uh, so you are making a model. So where you need to make sure that the loadings are properly loading into the items uh, in a latent variable that you made. So if they are not properly loading, they will be low loading values that I shown earlier, and because of that, there will be average variance extracted will be low because the loadings are low, and the average of those loadings is ABE. So you need to make sure that those are higher by removing the lower ones, and so that it is improved. Other method is that you remove the outliers from the data. In the previous video uh, in Amos, I showed you how to remove the outliers, 
and after that it will also improve so this data has already cleaned outlets so then discriminant validity it checks for that if your items are loading in one item uh, the items are loading in one latent variable it should not be loading to other latent variables so it should be high enough so it should discriminate appropriately that suppose your one variable one question is loading in item latent variable one it should not be loaded in latent variable two so how it checks it has this HTMT value which is making its graph then for for and larker for nil and larker condition same and then this is cross loading so this is showing that the item should not be loaded to the other one see if you look that jc should be loading in jc not jp so you can see that the values are very high as compared to the cross so if they are not high enough like this then the difference is very small and see the the jp should be loaded in jp so this thing is uh, being picked up in discriminant validity so if it is not also not giving uh, a high enough value then the problem would be that there is some some item that you have loaded in jc but it should be loaded in jp so this way you took for look for discriminant validity then there is uh, vif it should not be more than three and there are some which are higher and then if you if they are being dropped because of low loading then the problem will be solved automatically otherwise you have to look for solutions for that and in many books it says that up till 10 is okay but uh, it depends upon the references that you have then there is a model fit criteria there here nfi is very important and then you use for chi square so these are used technically they are used when you are comparing two models but there are some uh, upper and lower limits for these models and and this is the important portion in this uh, uh, diagram now if you want to look for the significance of the long run uh, significance of the coefficients which is very important part that is this effect is significant for that the most important one that is coming at the end of the video is that you go for bootstrapping and then estimate the bootstrap model it takes little bit more time than the simple model because it will run 500 5000 times okay so this is since the model was simple it took less time and now in here you can go for path effects so you can look for that it is p value is significant so my my effect is significant and you can also look for the to, uh, uh, the the loading effects and and if you go back to the diagram the p values are less than 0 0.05 which means all the items are significantly loading with the uh, latent variable so in this video we learned how to uh, load the data create a simplest model and and then uh, discussed about some of the problems in the upcoming video we will we will learn how to solve the problems and then we'll go towards making complicated models thank you very much for watching since you have seen the video let's check your check your general knowledge and learning from the video for this video i have created one question from you that you need to tell me in the comments that what is the difference between r square and f square with the comments i will learn i will see how you have picked it up and this way we will communicate with each other thank you